Tom's LSH plays, welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo and welcome to this tour of our newly completed African area. We've spent four months building this area of the zoo. It is finally complete and today we're going to take a tour of the whole thing. There is so much to see in this area of the zoo, including something brand new that I've just built that you've never seen before. From elephants to gorillas and from rhinos to some very special cats. Let's go. All right, here we are at the entrance to the Africa section. Looks a little different to when we started it four months ago because now we've got the Somali wild ass habitat. But yeah, let's go in. So the point of the Africa section was to have various different environments in it rather than just sort of building a big savanna and putting all the elephants and lions, etc., in it. I wanted to show the diversity of Africa. So we start off in a forest, which we're about to enter and then we move into a river and then finally the savannah. So we've got three different environment types in here. So this is the forest where it begins, nice and lush. I really like this sign that I put in up here, like a, uh, a banner that's suspended, a bit different to the usual Planet Zoo signs. We've got some fountains in there and then you can see the monorail station over there. So let's head on into the forest first of all get some nice shade here which is important in Southern California we've got some signage as well so people know where to go and the first animals that you come to is this row of exhibits here so we've got uh, giant tiger snails goliath beetles and goliath frogs so the beetles are here and you can actually see some which is nice And then we got the frogs in here. Don't know if we have to see these guys, they're pretty big, but you can only have two of them in here, so it can be quite elusive. And we got the snails here. There are some big snails, all set up to look like quite a natural um, exhibit with different rocks covering up the window so that each exhibit has a completely different shape to it at the front which I think works nicely. And the load of the new ferns that we've had in, I think they're in the Oceania pack. I really like those. So I put quite a lot of those in throughout this area. I sort of do that throughout the zoo. I don't really care where a plant comes from. If it looks vaguely like it fits the area, it goes in. There's only so many species in the game, so I don't want to limit myself to only using plants from that particular area because, you know, that might be a, a fern from New Zealand, but you'll see ferns like that in Africa that just won't be exactly that species, so that's the way I do it. And then we come to the monorail station. So this was a really popular video actually. I was a bit worried about doing a whole video about just building a monorail station, but you guys seem to really like it and I was really pleased with how it looked. This isn't connected to anything at the moment. I don't want to put in the rest of the monorail stations until the zoo's almost complete and I know exactly where they're going to go. There'll be this one, there'll be one in the entrance and there'll be at least one more, maybe two. But I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to put those yet. So for the moment, it's just the station. It looks pretty cool. This is based on an old monorail station at Jurong Bird Park in Singapore. Pretty much a, a direct copy of it. I saw it when I was looking for reference images and I really liked it, so I decided to use that. Now we come to the first proper habitat. So this is a mixed species habitat for Red River hogs, which you can see down here. Bongo, we've got a little baby one there. And a carpi as well, you can just see one over there. I think if I built this habitat again, I'll make it a little bit bigger. I feel like it's maybe a little bit small for the number of animals that we've got in here now. Once they bred a little, but I really like the way it looks and it works really well in game. I just think IRL, I'd rather it was a little larger. The mud walls that you can see at the back there were originally made by Zoo. They've had a real evolution as we built San Bernardino Zoo. This is basically a section of Zoo's mud walls, but with a load of the strangler fig roots added into it. And then through pretty much every habitat in the African section, we've added more and more to them and transformed them. Now we have mud walls that don't look anything like these ones, but these are sort of the, the original ones here. Moving on, we have, oh, we got some nice signage there. I made some custom African signage to use throughout this area. Uh, there's a lot of terrain changes here as well. We're going to move around now to Gorilla Mountain. Just up this path here. 
Ah, oh, great timing. There's the uh, there's the silverback now. Looking majestic on his climbing platform. We've got a viewing area here, and then two more viewing areas as well in this habitat. And we've got a moat down there to keep the gorillas in. And in the background, the mountain, which gives the habitat its name, built from the lava rocks, which were brand new at the time. I think it really brings to mind Virunga or somewhere like that. It's pretty imposing. So we'll go and take a look at some of the other viewing areas. Try to keep this forest really lush where I can. A lot of the giant rhubarb in there. So we've got a viewing window through glass here where you can see them feeding. From a forage feeder there. Got a little education station there. And then round here, we've got viewing of the indoor area as well. This is all the facilities for the exhibits uh, that we saw a minute ago. Uh, we've got some toilets there. And then we go into the indoor viewing. This is split into two. So on the left hand side, you get another view of the gorilla here. They can get right up onto this rock what that bobbin is there for to encourage them up here so when they're up here you get really cool views and then you can see into their indoor area here as well uh, where most of them are we ain't got a couple of babies as well mural looks pretty zoo like at the back and yeah that's gorilla mountain i really like this habitat i think it was the first time i tried this sort of scale of different viewing areas in one habitat and that's something i've continued throughout this area, done that a few times since. It just works really nicely to have that many different views. It doesn't work that well in Planet Zoo, you'll find that the guests will tend to predominantly use the first view that they come to. They're not too fussed about the others, but I want it to be a realistic looking zoo. And modern zoos have multiple um, viewing for most of the big animals. It just makes things a lot more interesting. Got a little sign for it there as well. And then we move on to the sort of crossroads in the area. I think this is my favorite spot in the African area. We can go to the left down to Hippo Falls, or we can go straight on and get into the savannah, or we can go right and get on up to the viewing platform, which gives you a view across the whole of the savannah. Retreading your steps doesn't really work great for uh, videos. So what we're gonna do is take the left-hand path to Hippo Falls and also check out the Caracal. And then uh, via the magic of editing, we will come back here and check out the Savannah. But let's go and check out Hippo Falls first. So a lot of work went into the water depths in this habitat. Again, we've got three different viewing areas. This is the main sort of over water viewing area. And this is where most of the guests are. So, wow, well, those hippos really are big, aren't they? I've designed the water so that you can see them in the water but still above the water line down there and then the water goes deeper here and you can see an underwater viewing gallery over there judging from where the hippos are they're not going to be any underwater as we walk past but i'll uh, shoot that separately and put a cinematic in for that so that you can see that so as we wind down here pathing for this it took quite some doing but i managed to get it it's a little bit more of a steeper gradient than I'd like, but it's very tricky to do that in Planet Zoo. But yeah, this is the underwater viewing with the waterfalls in the background. Got these hippo footprints along the floor as well, which I really like. That's just the hippo statue turned upside down. These viewing galleries are based on viewing galleries in um, Fort Worth Zoo in Texas and Cincinnati Zoo. I combine the features that I liked from both of them. Here's the view when there are hippos down here. Really pleased with that. And then there's one final viewing gallery up here where you can see them on land. So we'll just follow these mechanics. Not sure why we've got two of them there. But there you go, we've got a little baby hippo there. Just going into their indoor area. There's no viewing of the indoor area. I figure their habitat's big enough not to really need that. Plus we're in Southern California, so it's not like we've got long winters where they're gonna be spending months inside. Should be able to get good views of them without needing viewing of the indoors. So it's fairly basic in there. And then if we head back this way, there's another path out here, again, where you've got a choice of which way to go. 
So if we go all the way back that we just came, we'll end up back where we started. Or we can go out here. This I just finished off today, this little garden area here. But this takes us up to the savannah itself, the enormous giraffe house, which I've taken from uh, Bleisdorp Zoo. I believe it is pronounced. <laughs> I've been corrected many times the last time I said that in the video. I think Bleisdorp is the uh, the correct pronunciation or, or vaguely correct. So we got zebra and giraffe in here and a little meerkat family running around as well. We'll take a look at those in a bit. We're gonna go behind here down to the Caracal rocks. This is based on um, the Africa rocks section at San Diego Zoo. Uh, they've got all sorts of animals in there. I just took one of the habitats I liked and used it for the Caracal. Got some nice custom signage here as well. I really like the arrangement of this habitat, the way the rock work is all around. And then we've got these um, viewing galleries which are leaning towards the guests, which is very unusual. But I really like that. Not sure where the Caracal is at this point, but again, we'll grab some cinematics of him. At some point, I'm gonna put a female in here as well so we can get some little Caracal cubs, but uh, not got around to that yet. But I tried to make it look like a fairly reasonably sized Caracal habitat, but still keep the animals happy in game. So you can just see there, there's a little passage into a second part of the habitat, which you don't really notice as you look at it here, which is how it's big enough for their in-game needs. So that's the Caracal. And then there's another choice of parts here. If you were to go left down this path here, it will take you through to the elephants, or you can go back the way that you came. Uh, we're going to go back to the top of the savannah so we can walk down to the savannah through the sort of preferred entrance for it. All right, here we are back at the top. Let's explore the savannah. So the first place that you can go to is this viewing deck. I was going to put a restaurant here, but in the end I decided just to go with the viewing deck to give a really good view over the savannah. We've got some vending machines, ATMs, and another toilet over there. And then this custom Jeep, which I built for the island section of the zoo originally. It's just the... Um, default Jeep but with loads of Twilight pack pieces on it to make it look like it's actually got a roof. Something a bit more suitable if you're going to be driving around near lions and things like that. Um, you can take a look here out over the first part of the savannah habitat. You can see rhinos there and some springbok ah, and an ostrich as well. Those are the three animals that we have in here. And then over the other side we've got the giraffe, zebra and meerkats. But I really like this view. You can see all the way across the Africa section, really, from Hippo Falls. Just about make out the Caracal in the background. And then you've got the Savannah as well. So let's head on down to the Savannah. This habitat was, I think, the third time in a row that I built the biggest habitat ever. Hippo Falls was the biggest habitat I'd ever built. And then we built the Savannah, which was even bigger. And then we built the elephants, which was even bigger than that. And I'm pretty sure I'll never build anything bigger than the elephant habitat in this zoo. It is absolutely enormous. Got a sign here using a couple of the uh, rhino signs. Just rotated so we can get two colors on it. I like how that looks. And then this is the path we were on before that leads down to the Caracal. And then here's the main viewing for the whole savannah area. So it is two habitats, but it's designed to look like one habitat with a with a path splitting it. So this is the um, the main viewing. Get a really good view of the rhinos here, along with the other animals. The habitat also features what's called a creep, which is an area which some of the animals can get into that some of the others can't, which is this gap here. This enables the ostrich and the springbok to get away from the rhino if they ever feel the need to. And uh, if a rhino takes a disliking to you, uh, you will certainly feel the need to. Um, it's a bit larger than it would be in real life, of course, but this is the exact size to prevent the rhinos from getting in and still allow the springbok and the ostrich to get in. Over here, we've got the indoor habitats for the um, ostrich and springbok. And then hidden away behind those rocks there is one for the rhinos. And um, we've managed to get some trees into the habitat by surrounding them with rocks so that they don't get destroyed by the animals. Over the other side is where the giraffe and zebra and uh, okay, those mechanics would probably have been better spending their time here. Um, the giraffe and the zebra live. Here they are. 
Love that giraffe house. Such a crazy design. I think it looks amazing. The meerkats have a little burrow down here. Um, I put all their enrichment items here as well to encourage them to spend time here. Don't see... Oh, there we go. There's one. There's two. They're really cute. We've already got a meerkat habitat in the zoo, but couldn't resist putting them in here as well. Hence the reason for the hot wire all around the bottom of the rocks to make sure that they don't jump out. We've got a baby giraffe as well. And we've also got a feeding platform, which was one of the main things I wanted to achieve with this habitat, was to try and build a classic giraffe feeding platform that actually looked like it worked and had guests going up to it, etc. And this works. The guests can get up here, and I've got an animal talk point under the sunshade as well, so that the guests come up here every time there's an animal talk. And this gives you a really good view of the giraffes. It's a shame there's no actual animal feeding in the game to get them right up to here. You just have to hope you get lucky. I'll try and get a cinematic of that for you. And you can also see into the elephant habitat from up here through this fence. In fact, I can see one just over there. Not sure if you'll be able to make it out on YouTube or not. All right, we've got a tour starting here, or a talk rather. So like I say, this is how we get the guests up here. I'm so glad they added animal talks because you can do a lot of really cool things with them. And that's the savannah. Nice to see it all up and running. Let's take a look at the elephants now. So this is the biggest habitat in the zoo by quite some way. It's uh, split into three parts, all of which the elephants can access. We start with this habitat here for the bulls. So we've got two bull elephants in here. There's one now. This is heavily based on the habitat at Chester Zoo. That's where I got this waterfall idea from and the um, rock walls as well, which I really like. And they're kept in by a dry moat. A pretty sizable habitat. There's the other one. That building in the background is their indoor quarters. So there's a, a bit of land that joins those up as well. So there's um, quite a lot of space for these guys. This is what the interior looks like. We've got separate stools for each elephant. Looked at a lot of reference images for that. Um, pleased with how that looks inside. But then the main feature of the habitat and the reason it's called the elephant forest, as you can see from the sign here, is this forested area here. So I'd always thought that you couldn't really have trees and plants and things like that in elephant habitats because they destroy them so quickly. But in Seoul Zoo in South Korea and apparently in a few other zoos, they have an arrangement like this where we've got a nice natural forest in the center of the habitat. You can see a gate over there and they are allowed access to it maybe one day a week or for a few hours here and there. And that gives them the opportunity to experience natural surroundings like this while also making sure that the trees and the shrubs survive and the keepers can supervise it and make sure they don't knock down any trees or anything like that. So the way it works in game is we've got this gate over there so the females are able to access this as part of their um, habitat. The males can't, I can move one of the males over for breeding purposes anyway so he will also be able to get in here at that point. And then it continues over this way to the main part of the habitat. Really like these rocks here. Again, based on Chester Zoo. It's made it a bit more, uh, a bit taller. And here we have the female habitat, essentially the same as the male habitat, just in a, in a different arrangement. And we've also got this little pool here. So when we get a baby elephant, um, they can splash about in there. So as you can see from this aerial shot, it really is a massive, massive habitat. Biggest thing I've ever built by a long way. Uh, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Let's move on to something brand new. I just built this um, yesterday, actually. We've finally got some sort of drink uh, food information area in the African part of the zoo now, the Pomoja Drink Stop. Uh, Pomoja is Swahili for togetherness. I've named this after a collab zoo I did a couple of years ago with some amazing builders where we built an African zoo together. Uh, this is again based on the um, hippo habitat. <laughs> it's basically just the roof from the hippo habitat and a few other things. Uh, it's a cute little place here where people can grab a drink. We've got some amazing pieces at the back. These are by Toves, one of my favorite creators from here's coffee shop pack that I've put in here for some detail. We've got a coffee machine, a menu, and then 
these little counters that I made. Uh, I've put loads of the new gift shop items here and there just to bring it to life. And you get another view of the savannah from here as well. Loads of great pieces in the last pack for things like this, the little hippos on the table and the posters in the background. Really like that. Let's head on over to the final habitat in the African area and we'll take a quick look at the exit on the way. The exit to the zoo is down here. That's what we built a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, we've got one more habitat to look at, which is the lions. So I've finished doing this area up now. A bit more fencing and things like that. But here is the lion habitat based on Singapore Zoo. Really, really like this one. This is the most terrain work I've ever done in a habitat, getting all these different levels in here. I think it looks really good, especially the way the lions can get up onto those rocks. Kept in by a moat. I like how you can see the flying fox forest in the background, and then across to Australia and the islands as well. If we take a look down here, this is where we're going in season three of San Bernardino Zoo. We've got a big, big area to fill here. You may remember when we started the African area, I said that the end of the area would be a coastal exhibit for African penguins. Well, that has been canceled and replaced with something much more exciting because in the interim, I saw the coolest penguin habitat I've ever seen in my life. And the first episode of season three of San Bernardino Zoo, we will be building that. It is going to be complicated, but if we can get it right, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Season 3 will begin two weeks from today. Next week, I am finally going to be releasing my tour of the zoos of Singapore, including some of the original habitats that San Bernardino is based on and the coolest penguin habitat you have ever seen. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining, if you're a member. And I'll see you next week in Singapore. Bye.